How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Vampirus Carmilla issue number three. This is from July 2021 and at the time of recording is the newest issue. It just came out uh, this week I believe. Um, and for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the magazine, this is a comic magazine. It features uh, six classically styled black and white horror stories. It's an anthology, so they're all different. And if you haven't picked up the previous issues, you can jump right in here without having missed anything because they're all new every single issue. Um, we open up with this really nice uh, Frasetta cover. And uh, right off the bat, I want to say just a quick apology for the censorship. That really is uh, YouTube's idea, not mine. I, I work hard for my videos, and I don't want YouTube just flipping out for no reason. It's really not super explicit, but YouTube, you know how they can be sometimes. Uh, open it up, and we see that on the back cover, we get uh, Carmela's Scary Tales, and this time she's talking about druidesses, and they're a uh, were often leaders and warriors. And she's talking about how uh, they had magical abilities to uh, to heal people, and they say that since it's a you know a practice, there still could be practitioners today. So you know, always like to try to. Uh, to hook that around into the the present in these it seems like I do like that they they put something interesting on the back of the inside cover and not just you know an ad or something it really is just something cool to check in week after week and see what she's going to be talking about this time um, moving right along we have the the credits page credit where credit is due if you wanna read through that and see all the people that brought you the uh, the stories this week um, that's uh that's cool and then after that uh the contents we get carmela's blood letters the uh page checking in with vampirus carmela these are only a uh, one page but i i always really like them i like that we get a check-in with our horror host and that she has her own little story going on even if it is only one page i really always do uh, appreciate that um afterwards we have our six stories here uh green queen pole cat Slay It Again Van, Eye of the Beholder, Sword and Saucery, that's the one from the uh, the cover, and The Life Eater. Um, let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about each story. That being said, I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a, a basic understanding as to what each story is about. Uh, the quick check-in, the, uh, the page with Carmilla there. You see uh, she's bathing in blood, you know, being a, a vampire and all that. And one of the uh, creatures at her uh, castle is actually uh, Elizabeth Bathory, and she's preparing the uh, the bloodbath for her. So, you know, kind of a, a fun tie-in and see who all exactly is on, you know, her roster of, uh, you know, uh, creatures from hell that she's uh, hosting at Dracula's castle. Um... Moving along, our first story, Green Queen there. Uh, Green Queen, we get this uh, this model there taking photos of her in a supposedly cursed jungle. And we get the t uh, creature from the Black Lagoon inspired monster there that is uh, sneaking up on them. And the monster will, of course... Uh, come after the girl as uh, quite often monsters do and drag her under the water where they cannot catch up and presume her for dead now we cut forward in time 20 years later which I always do like when they uh, you know take a classic story and then you get some twist you know whenever you see 20 years later you're like okay something crazy and different is going to be happening with this story and you see the uh, the local guy that was on that photo shoot uh, had a, an incredible uh, crush on 
the model there, and even though it's been 20 years, has not forgotten about her, but of course something's going to happen that will draw him back into the story. And I don't want to show you anymore because I'm not doing any, you know, spoilers for this story. But I do really like when they take a classic monster and kind of shuffle the pieces around where, you know, we know the gist of the story, but we've, you know, not seen anything like it, you know, exactly before, you know, taking the familiar and making it a little unfamiliar there. Um, and I really do like that. Plus, you don't get too many uh, creature from the Black Lagoon stories, so I always do appreciate, you know, creature-styled stories. Um, up next, we get a story called Polecat, and uh, this is really the only page I can show you guys. Uh, you get this exotic dancer and she has this special routine where when she's on the pole her face morphs into this uh, cat face so kind of like a werewolf story but not exactly and it's uh, you know sort of its own thing a, a transforming cat creature and you get this guy who's been coming to the club every day for a month and he says he's a uh, a famous writer dealing with topics of the supernatural but he presents them more in a scientific way and he wants to study her and invites her back to his home for a private dance for five thousand dollars but of course you know that um this is the creeps maybe maybe there's more to meets the eye than uh than what's going on there so a pretty cool story and i I did like the twist. It, you know, kept it uh, really interesting towards the end. And it's, you know, like a vampire, but different. And it's, you know, something, again, we haven't exactly seen before. And, you know, you do the classic monsters over and over again, shaking things up and keeping it fresh. So it's not exactly a werewolf story. Um, up next, we get the, uh, the Slay It Again van story. And you see Van Helsing, he destroys Dracula's castle. Now, one thing that was kind of odd is even though uh, Vampiris Carmilla was actually there at this time, you think she would get a, a stronger reaction out of seeing this, but she <laughs> she maintains her, her cool there. Uh, but we see uh, after he destroys Dracula's castle, he uh, tracks down every single person he's ever bitten, uh, they do make this uh, cool observation that I really do like. Uh, he's giving a speech about vampires later on, and he talks about how vampires are very obsessive, like they'll have to count stones and stuff, so Dracula actually kept excessive, uh, obsessive uh, notes about who all he had bit, so he's able to uh, track down every single one later. But anyway, the uh, the last one he bites, I mean the last one he kills, uh, there's an earthquake and that jostles the stake loose which causes her to uh, come alive again. And she says, Van Helsing, you took over, you uh, killed not just Dracula and me but my entire family. I'm going to come after your entire family as well. And... It all, you know, culminates with uh, him doing a book signing. You get to see a retired Van Helsing who has, you know, killed all the vampires and writing books now. And, of course, it goes in a, a dark, you know, uh, <laughs> a dark classic uh, twist there at the end. Up next, uh, Eye of the Beholder. Uh, we get this really fun opening with Carmilla where she's talking about she's going to a party and she goes, but they ran out of zombie and bloody Mary, but I got it covered. And you see in the back of her, uh, her convertible there, she has a zombie and she has bloody Mary. I, I really love the pun, but also a really cool visual to go with the pun. Uh, I, I always love how they do uh, fun stuff with the little host segments. And this is, you know, just one of my favorites with her driving in the car with a uh, two of her monsters there going to a party. Uh, but we meet uh, in Eye of the Beholder these two friends who have uh, known each other for a while. One is the, the more modest uh, small town girl and one is the, uh, the socialite and, you know, sort of the, uh, the ginger and the Marianne there. 
Uh, but she finds that even though her friend's more timid, she tends to get all the stuff that uh, the social girl really wants to have. And of course, it's going to make her jealous. But we see in uh, the years that come, she's dating the guy that the social girl wants. And they, uh, she drives her to a modeling job, and even though she's just the driver waiting in the lobby, they start to offer her modeling work when the social girl's like, hey, I, I drove you here to help me get this job, and, and you're getting it yourself. And she, even though the other girl is not doing it intentionally, uh, she winds up, you know, getting incredibly jealous of her, and this turns into a rivalry. Uh, reminded me, you know, with the, the female rivalry, uh, a little bit of the movie Death Becomes Her. But, of course, this, you know, turns into a classic kind of Tales from the Crypt, you know, revenge and backstabbing story. Really, uh, really fun. Anyway, moving right along going through this uh, pretty fast this week. Um, sword and sorcery. And you get the Vikings landing on um, a new land. I'm guessing this is America. And uh, he uh, wanders off by himself. And he finds a, a big giant monster about to attack this uh, woman he finds. So he runs in with his sword. And then you get a... Carmella there in her little uh, Viking-styled hat. Um, he runs in to defeat the monster, and I'll go ahead and show you guys the. Uh, this is the the panel they took to do the uh, the cover. So I do like when it's almost a direct parallel. You know, the panel page versus the cover. I really like seeing when they adapt it so closely because so many comics, you know, the cover is just whatever and. Yeah, uh, to see it being something literally ripped right from a panel is fun. But they follow the monster back, and they see what they think is a temple. But of course, we know it's uh, actually a giant saucer, a UFO, and there's aliens down there communicating with their minds. And this story is going to take a massive sci-fi twist, you know? Now we know from the title that there was going to be aliens, so... It wasn't as much of a surprise when they showed up because it literally said saucery in the, the title. But it is a fun twist to combine these two genres. You know, and uh, The Creeps and Vampirus Carmilla are both horror magazines. And I do like they stay primarily rooted in horror, but it seems like about once an issue we'll get something that's a little bit off topic but still enjoyable. And that, you know, shakes it up and keeps it fresh, but only doing one an issue really uh, keeps it from losing track of its themes. I do want to show you guys there's this fun ad, Monster Bash Under the Stars, you know, at the Riverdale, uh, the Riverside, rather, drive-in in, in uh, Vandegrift, PA. Uh, just a really fun classic ad there. The picture of Frankenstein and Creature from the Black Lagoon is on the screen. I don't know. Something about this ad is very, very charming, and I, I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys. Um, there's a, a couple more, but uh, that's really the only one I want to, you know, linger on. Um, flip, flip, flip. There we go. The final story, and I can't believe we're at the end already. We get uh, Egypt way in the past, and you see this dancer for the pharaoh, and then we cut to the future, and it talks about how... Uh, yeah, there's the, the pharaoh, and off to the side of his tomb, kept separate, is the tomb of this dancer. And they reach for the scroll, and the scroll is going to give them a flashback so they can figure out what happened in the past and why she's locked up by herself. And as Carmela tells us, she's locked up because she's a life eater, so... What does Life Eater mean? How did she become this situation? And we get, you know, of course, a flashback. We see her as a young girl get kidnapped, become a slave, and become, uh, you know, one of the, the Pharaoh's top uh, girls there. 
but she's going to have to, you know, fight in order to uh, survive in this harsh situation she's been put in. This is a kind of a, a mummy story, but there's not too many of your typical uh, mummy antics in this one. It really takes it and turns it into kind of, you know, a character doing whatever they can to survive and, of course, crossing a line. And it's, uh, it's another mummy story, but they play it off uh, very differently. And overall, um, I really did like this issue. Uh, they really took a lot of the classic monsters' ideas and mixed them into something uh, new and unique. So it's a lot of uh, creatures we had seen before, but this issue really did take the time to present them in different ways, and I really do like the inventiveness we had here. And also, I do want to say uh, in the story with the two girls, uh, they were going to go, uh, the, she was going to go on a date with this guy, they were going to see a movie, and there's a, uh, but we're going to a horror film based on the magazine, the Cru, and then the, he gets uh, cut off, so in this universe, the, uh, the Creeps was going to be made into a, a movie, which I think is probably uh, just a, uh, the magazine people telling a quick joke. But that being said, the Creeps would make a uh, a really fun, you know, uh, anthology movie, you know, especially if they kept, especially if they kept it, you know, black and white and focusing on the classic monsters. That would be really cool. I mean, there's several ways you could go with a, a Creeps movie, and if they ever did that, I would be super, super excited. So, um, it's probably just uh, the the creators having a bit of fun. But I would, I would totally watch a Creeps movie if there was one. I mean, hey, it's a comic. You could even do it animated if you wanted to. Um, but I'm curious, you know, if they made it into a movie, would they focus on the classic monsters? Would they keep it black and white? Would it be live action or animated? And yeah, I, I would be curious, you know, you could even do like a TV show or something. But again, probably just a throwaway line and I'm reading too much into it, but it would be fun. Um, anyway, uh, that being said, Vampirus Carmilla issue 3, steady, just like all the uh, past issues for this series war. And if you haven't been picking up, I'd recommend uh, you doing so. And if you're a fan of the, uh, the past volumes of Carmilla or The Creeps, I definitely recommend continuing to pick this up because another steady issue, and I really did enjoy that. So anyway, um, to everyone who's watched so far, Thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You are really helping the channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom if you want to see more. Should be my Creeps and Carmella playlist. If you want to see more, click there to see more. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom.